Hi, welcome to another episode of Ryan Baining's Whiskey World and today it's time for another blind tasting. Let me quickly take the time so I know when I have to pause the recording. Alright, so it's 48. Alright, perfect. So today it's time for another blind tasting and as if you have seen the first two blind tastings that I've recorded, both were of whiskies older than 20 years old. Now I don't want you to think that this this case is filled with bottles that are all more than 20 years old. Absolutely not. No, most of it are younger whiskies. So it's actually quite a coincidence that my first two whiskies that I tried were so old. Now today, um, there's still 80 samples in the, in the chest. I've added one bottle that I picked up the other week. Uh, Belvenie 14 year old uh, Caribbean cask. Uh, I was like, ah, oh, I, I opened it, I tried it, and I was like, oh, let me let me also add that sample to, to the chest. Now, um, that's all for now. I think it's time to continue to taste the whiskey, to nose the whiskey. Now, I've had comments, isn't it a good idea? to let the whiskey breathe a little bit longer before you start to nose and taste it. And it's a good point. Um, of course, for sure when a whiskey is older, it's nice to let it open up a little bit longer. The, the 25 year old Glendrona and also the 21 year old uh, Rock Island are old whiskies and they, they benefit if you let them open up a little bit longer. Now I don't want to let you wait here for minutes and minutes and minutes that these videos end up being uh, more than half an hour long or an hour long just to let it open up too long. Um, I try to put my introduction a little bit longer, um, perhaps to have a little bit bigger sample sizes so I can taste it a little bit more, take my time to really get to know this whiskey. But of course it's a blind tasting this can be a whiskey that's again 20 plus years old. It can also be a three year old whiskey, something in the middle. Let's, let's find out and see which kind of notes I will get today. By nosing this, I am immediately going again towards a sherry cask whiskey. Um, there are strong sherry influences. I get ripe oranges, some figs I got, some treacle, some juicy, what would I say? Perhaps some orange juice, but not that soury, but the, the sweetness of it. Hints of dark chocolate and also some, some drop, some licorice. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite convinced that this is again a sherry cask whiskey, a sherry matured whiskey. Um, not sure about the, the ABV. On the nose it's sometimes a little bit difficult to, to tell. Um, especially with this type of glass which diffuses the, the alcohol, the ethanol notes which makes it less punchy in the nose. So let's, let's take a zip and see what, uh, what we get there. Yeah, sherry matured. Oh, this is a very thick, um, thick whiskey. It's oily, it's, on your, it's coating on your tongue. It's warming, it's more than 40% ABV, quite sure of that. I'm, I'm going towards cast strength, to be honest. You get like licorice on your tongue, um, thick honey, the, the um, dates and the figs. It's a really heavy sherry influenced whiskey. Yeah, dark, it's full of dark notes, if you know what I mean, like a whiskey with heavy influences from perhaps the tannins of the European oak. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a European oak whiskey, 
um, but sherry cask, that for sure. Um, lovely notes of licorice, a little bit of treacle. It's it's a warming whiskey that I can feel now go go down. I I'm really really liking this one. No idea what it is though, but I'm really liking it. Let it sit down for a little bit. My first first idea is sherry matured, more than I, I would say more than fifty percent ABV. So I'm going for cask strength. Um, it's not peated or very lightly peated, but but peat is absolutely not one of the overpowering notes. Let me check the time for a second. All right, we should still have a couple minutes. Um, it's it's delicious. I'm really liking it. I think this is the style that, that I really like. The pure sherry cask matured. Um, let me see if I can get a hint of peat, but I'm not sure about that. No. Peat doesn't have an influence in this drum. If it is peated, it's very lightly. But I, to be honest, I think it's not peated. Mouth coating, it's lovely. I'll add a little drop of water, not because I think that the dram really needs it, but because I think that it will, well, I want to see what it does. If it opens up perhaps a little bit more, let's go for, for just one tiny teaspoon. Yeah. More leather, um, more chocolate, some caramel. I really like this whiskey. So what can it be? Sherry matured, quite some age. Um, well, to be honest about the age, I've been wrong about the age completely. I actually don't know if it's if it's that that old, but for sure. It has a lovely, um, how do you say, punch to it. Might be like a Glen Goyne cask strength or, for, or a Cavalan cask strength. Um, if I would have to guess, and I have to, and then I think I would pick a Cavalan, Cavalan Sherry Cask. That said, it can also be like a, um, a heavily sherry Glen Farkless, the 105 perhaps. Um, Glen Goyne I've mentioned. I'm between those. Those. Let's let's take a look at the the time and at the questions that I've made. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you. All right, there we are again. Okay, the questions that I've made to answer myself is let me see how much ABV do I think this is between forty to forty five? No, forty six to fifty? Don't think so. 51% and higher, that's what I would go for, yeah. I really think this is a, a cask strength whiskey. What about the age? It can be a nice non-age statement, fresh cask with a, a, a lot of cask influences. Wouldn't be surprised if it's that. Um, it does feel to me quite well matured, so perhaps Around 10 years old, more or less. The price. I really like this one. So, if it would be like 150 euros, I, I would buy it, yeah. 
it would be less than that, I, I'm thinking to buy it a bottle again uh, this afternoon. Um, I really, really like this whiskey. All right, let's see what it is. All right, is the N748. The color looked sheer and mature, but perhaps not as dark as I thought it would be. So the color doesn't always tell tell you that much. Like it really has a rich sherry cask matured flavor and it does have a sherry color, but not that not that dark. All right, numbers. Blind whiskey letter. All right, so we go to the N. 748. Wow. All right, this is the Glen Ruffus Sherry Bomb from Cooper's Choice. All right, so yeah, heavy sherry flavors, that's true. It's 57% ABV, so cask strength. Age, it doesn't say here, but if I remember correct, um, I think they don't even tell you how many years, but I guess it's it's young, like eight to ten years, perhaps a little bit younger. But you can you can see it's been an active sherry cask, uh, sherry um, how you say it? Sorry, cask strength. I think it's a single cask. Um, whiskey base code is ninety five thousand five hundred twenty seven. If you want to check it for yourself. I will also put a screenshot from, from Whiskey Base. So it's a Glen Ruffus um, Sherry Bomb, they even call it, and it really is that. It really gives you a lot of sherry flavors. Um, I, I know there are some reviewers that, that don't like it when it's so obvious Sherry Bomb, like it's given, if, if it has too much of a European oak influence. I really like it. So Glen Ruffus, no peat, cask strength um, from Cooper's Choice Independent Bottlers. So it might be a little bit difficult to get get it now, um, but to my taste, I really enjoyed it. I really recommend it, and um, I hope you like this review. Um, I've. This is my third blind tasting review, so I'm still learning, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's a challenge for me too, because I don't want to look like someone who knows it all, because I'm not. And I also don't want to look at someone who doesn't know anything, because, <laughs> well, I guess nobody really likes it. So we've had before the Glen Ronek, 25 years old, from 1993, single cask for Cabo Benito in Andorra. And we've also had the Rock Island 21 years old, which I both will link here. Thank you for joining me again. Thank you for joining me in my challenge to taste as many whiskies as I can blind. I will keep on adding samples. I've come in contact also to, uh, to share some more samples. When I know more about it, I will share it with you too. Thank you for joining me. This is Ryan Bainix, Whiskey World Blind Tastings. Have a great day and enjoy your whiskies.